Today, in order of how the story happens in San Andreas, we're going to discuss all the hidden times that Rockstar Games hinted Big Smoke would betray you. Your first huge big clue that you likely missed was right there before your eyes, and it happens minutes from the beginning of the game. As you know, Carl has returned home from Liberty City to attend the funeral of his mother, Beverly Johnson. And what Big Smoke is doing during this funeral is a huge clue as to what happens later on in the game. And it actually turns out that Big Smoke was planning to kill Sweet. Because during this mission, as we all know, before you go to the funeral, you head back to CJ's house. And where is Big Smoke? He's hiding inside of CJ's house. Now, we don't question it at the time, but what is he doing there? Why is he not at the funeral? And what exactly is he doing inside the house? So Big Smoke was waiting for Sweet to return home from the funeral in order order to kill him, but when CJ arrives it completely throws his plans off track and he has to pretend he's there for an unknown reason and pretending the house from a home invader which then turns out to be CJ. But the truth is, Big Smoke knows exactly who it is and has to just play this off cool. The next clue is also during this scene where Big Smoke then throws his baseball bat onto the table and it smashes a picture of CJ's mum. Now this is foreshadowing here from Rockstar Games, we're zooming into the picture of a cracked frame and the baseball bat from Big Smoke on top of it. A little later into the mission, the funeral is then attacked by the ballers. This is the part where the gang takes the BMX bikes and escape back to Grove Street. However, did you notice something about this mission and Big Smoke in particular? Well, the ballers don't actually actually shoot at him. You can see they target pretty much everyone else apart from Big Smoke and of course mainly CJ. And that also includes Ryder which at this point in the game may or may not already be involved with Big Smoke's antics but that will be a video for another day. So the only reason the ballers wouldn't shoot Smoke is because they clearly have a reason to keep him alive and that he's connected in a bigger way. However this is nothing compared to our next clues which happen to be the biggest missions when it comes to foreshadowing and betrayal in GTA San Andreas. During the mission drive through where we hear Smoke's famous order. Well, not only that, but there's also some very interesting reactions that Big Smoke has to a variety of different conversations. How moms get killed? We gotta talk about it. We all gotta talk about it. They was going for sweet. How you supposed to know that? You know what people are like. Say they have love for you, but won't say a word. Too damn scared. Some people say they saw a green saber doing the work, then speeding away. Yeah, but people like to talk, don't they? Anyway, that's half the Santos you talking about. Yeah, you right, my bad. Hey, bro. So of course, Ryder right there was saying a little bit too much information and Big Smoke had to quiet him down. Then later on into the mission, as you can see when they all get their food, uh, they're talking about CJ and Sweet's mum once again and Big Smoke again interrupts them and gets them to stop talking about it. Six with extra dip, a number seven. You know I gotta know about mine. No, CJ, I know. I'm just trying not to think about it, bro. I mean, I didn't know she was hit until it was all over. Yeah, right, 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 right. Let's eat. Another thing you may not have noticed is why is Big Smoke's order as long as it is? Why does Big Smoke take such a long time to order food? Maybe it is just because he is a larger man and has a larger appetite. But a lot of people claim, and it makes a lot of sense to imagine that the reason why Big Smoke's order was so long is because he's trying to buy time for the ballers who are going to be doing the drive-by to arrive. As soon as Big Smoke realises he's wasted enough time, that's when he finishes up his order. And then we can also analyse Big Smoke's uh, behaviour during this mission, where we then have to chase after this baller car, and the crew then start shooting at it. Now, interestingly enough, Ryder and Sweet also shoot at the baller car. If Ryder is involved at this point in the game, it's kind of confusing as to why Ryder would be shooting the ballers and Big Smoke wouldn't be. However, as you can see, Big Smoke is the only character in the vehicle who doesn't shoot the ballers at this point in time and instead claims it to be, you know, he doesn't want to spill his food, he doesn't want his food to get cold, and he'd rather be concerned about his food than actually shooting any of the ballers that have just tried to literally kill them all. So then later on in the mission, you once you've killed the ballers, you then head back to Grove Street, and everyone is complaining to Big Smoke, saying like, what was up with you, why weren't you shooting? And eventually when you arrive at Sweet's house, and then Sweet invites everyone back inside, and Big Smoke refuses this offer. Y'all coming in for a beer? Nah, baby, I need to get back to the crib. CJ, give me a ride. All right, Smoke, let's go. See y'all later. 
So you've literally just gone out with your friends and you've just had a drive-by attempt done on you. And for some reason, Big Smoke is concerned with getting back home because he has some sort of business to deal with. So that's very interesting there and another huge clue that why does he want to go home so badly? Because obviously plans that he was aware of have now gone bad, so he has to go back to deal with them. And this is where another interesting thing, or another foreshadowing point happens, another clue, is that Big Smoke has moved out of Grove Street. Now, Big Smoke owns a house in enemy territory. Big Smoke's aunt's house, quote-unquote, or he got some money from his aunt and a house bought from him. That house is actually within Baller territory. Another huge clue, which was the probably one of the most obvious in the game, is how many times Crash, Tenpenny and Pulaski are seen at Big Smoke's house. There's so many occasions where you arrive at Big Smoke's house, knock on the door, and you're greeted with Tenpenny and Pulaski. And when CJ questions Big Smoke as to why they're there, he seems to be kind of like taken back by the question and seems to come up with these random answers like, oh, I don't know why they're here. They're involved in all of my business. I can't do anything without them getting involved. But as we know now, having hindsight from later on in the game, the reason why they're there is because they are helping him conduct this drug business, essentially using him as the master puppet in order to pull all of the strings and create this sort of like fighting amongst each gang. Now, another huge clue that you may or may not have missed is in reuniting the families. And this mission takes us to the hotel in North Los Santos, where Sweet goes inside and ends up like getting trapped in there and all the police swarm in. And Ryder and Big Smoke take off, they run away and they go missing. So now it's up to CJ to go into the hotel and save Sweet. And once they come out, Smoke and Ryder are nowhere to be seen. Then they do eventually arrive and this really awkward interaction happens where they're like, come on, let's go, let's drive. And I may be looking into this too much, but Ryder seems to like tap Big Smoke on the arm and be like, yeah, come on, we better do this. Like as if like there's some sort of sinister reason as to why they went missing. Now let's discuss some of the smaller little clues that there are in the game. And that is that Big Smoke's missions do nothing to benefit Grove Street. And you'll notice that Sweet's missions, Ryder's missions, and all of the other characters have their own purpose. And Big Smoke's missions do nothing to help Grove Street, unlike Ryder and Sweet's. Instead, Big Smoke's missions always have these kind of dangerous events that try and get CJ killed or into danger, or have some sort of affiliation with Russian gang members and drug dealers. So you could either look at this one of two ways. This is obviously Big Smoke, like, taking CJ along in order to try and get him killed, or to try and get him, like, clipped or whatever. But then also it's just it's just Big Smoke, you know, CJ comes along and it's clear to see that obviously Big Smoke has some sort of deeper involvement that he's not telling us all about. So we then see Big Smoke and Ryder actually working with Tenpenny and Pulaski. And that is when the game confirms to us that these characters have been working behind our backs and betrayed us all along. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please subscribe and leave a like and I'll see you guys in another GTA video in the future. Adios.